you self-reflect on that. You develop the emotional literacy, the emotional intelligence, you know, the mental health through all of these cycles that you're processing and you actually problem solve, learn critical thinking skills and actually learn how to better understand people, especially yourself, develop self-awareness. The one thing I would want to give anybody and you overcome your challenges and move forward and evolve as a better human being. And then by becoming a better example and human being yourself, you connect with the world in that way. And in that relevance, you are growing and helping shape the world by being and taking care of yourself, being the best version of yourself, which helps the environment around you by sharing your joy, living your joy, and learning to share it by documenting instead of creating something you're not with this process in your progress. Awareness documentation. You're helping set an example for the world by being everything that you actually are. Published in the 21st century by Microlithosaur Just so you can't see your agreement to come in peace Is what makes this a safe place for all of us to breathe Today, beautiful soul, dude. You know what I'm gonna make a video about today? So much emphasis on the egg, yeah. <laughs> Isolation. We're all going through it right now, and it's tough. I'm going through it, and I may be making this video a whole year after quarantines pretty much started. But it's only getting harder for these people. And if we're all under individual house arrest, agreeing to this thing, we might as well make it better for ourselves. So what can we do to connect with ourselves and our own health at this time? Mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, all in one. I want to share that with you. So, something that's really, really helped me that many people may not be aware of, but they may be spending more time with themselves, introspecting, looking into themselves, and self-reflecting on the perspective that's going to help them develop and progress. The thoughts that help them evolve and become a better human being, but think outside the box also, so that they're not thinking all the nonsense of the media and everything that's coming to you, they're thinking more about what is actually healthy to be involved with by not listening to the external factors and components, but by listening to the internal, what is true within. And this is so important and, and, and a widespread imperative that we take this time to look into ourselves and to really think about what matters, to feel the truth in our heart and to do what is right. Do what you know to be right. And when you follow that, you follow your joy, you live out what you believe to be the right thing to do and take that personal responsibility and integrity and accountability for others into account. You begin to bring yourself and the world in check. And then we'll be able to see through the bullshit collectively and stop this madness because it's a whole load of bollocks that we shouldn't be involved with. And we're all allowing it to happen. So the way that we can start to do this, a method that's really worked for me, and I've been doing and sharing this for years now, years, ever since 2017. 2018 was really heavy, 2019 even a little bit less, and then 2020 very little because I cleared my mind and my mental space to be able to think more clearly using this method. It's called awareness documentation. And basically, to start you off, I'm not going to give you a massive amount of details for how this is done, but taking the time out of your day to have a personal meeting with yourself. You know, we, we, we're all talking online. We're all having those online video chats like Zoom. I started using Zoom when it pretty much first came out, and everybody's on Zoom now, which is great. They're having daily meetings with all these other people, how often do you take the time to slow down, quiet everything around you, and have a meeting with yourself to check in, to see how you're doing? You know, oftentimes we don't actually do that. So 
if you actually have 15 minutes to yourself and, and no distractions, you're not focused on anything else, you're just in the silence, how's your mind going to respond and react to that? Can you sit well with yourself? It's important you start to ask questions that are going to help lead in with the truth of what your personal feeling for progress is. Because when you follow that truth, you're going to be following your joy and ultimately living out your calling and purpose here on earth to be in service of others by, by living, following your joy and living to share it. Follow your joy and live to share it. And that's what we're here for. So this method is something that I use to heal my mind. I used to basically overcome a ton of mental health challenges that I had. I lost my own voice. I lost my purpose. I lost my identity. I had betrayed myself so much by sacrificing my own will and my own perspective to other people to value theirs more than my own opinion so that I lived for others instead of myself. And I became so enthralled in this, if that's the right word, that it overtook my life to such a degree that I began to not only mentally have this malfunction in my capacity to think and process things for my own human being, but physically I began to manifest symptoms where I had a giant red beard that was a rash. It was literally itchy, scaly, peeling, and the skin around my mouth was so disgusting that it would show and I would try and consciously cover it up. And I didn't know what to do. I was in college at the time because I wasn't listening to myself. I was living a life that wasn't for me. And I was pursuing trying to get this thing, which is this job or this goal or this destination, working for my uncle's business, gaining experience there, learning business administration so that I could then take over that business and own it. And it wasn't for me. And it wasn't my truth. So I had to listen to myself and say, holy shit, the people that I'm closest to are manipulating me and they're treating me like complete garbage and I haven't seen through all of this and I'm living a life that isn't me. So I had to literally switch everything that I was doing when I learned that I was actually a victim of abuse. And this abuse is unheard of in some ways, but... It's becoming more and more prevalent for other people to know about. It's called narcissistic abuse, where somebody literally tries to take your identity from you by putting your head into this bubble that has this encasing of a bubble that protects your head, and they poke it, and they poke it until that bubble shrinks, and your perspective is so weak that that bubble shrinks enough so that your mind can be manipulated. And the end goal is for you to be an exact duplicate of them and their mentality to be a slave to their will and do their bidding. A narcissist needs a source of supply. So they look for that narcissistic source and then they basically make you feel like shit so that they can feel a little bit better, treat you like complete garbage once they flip their face on you uh, to who they really are and they let go of the facade they'll start to scrape away basically at your skin and the outer layers of what protect you and they'll make you more sensitive to yourself in a way that you become allergic to yourself and that's that was the physical manifestation of what was on my face was that I wasn't able to truly freely express myself it was in my throat, it was in my mouth, it was in my whole body. My whole body was a manifestation of that and I changed my diet completely. I, I had a yeast overgrowth in my entire system and I felt so much better after a colon colonic and my shit was terrible. Like, it was bad. It was bad. And I eventually healed after, you know, I dropped out of college. My first class, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. I came back two days later from my next time I showed up to class and I dropped the other three classes and I'm like, dude, I am quitting everything, man. And I literally put in my two weeks notice for my job two weeks later. And then two weeks after that, when the job was dropped, I moved into a new place. 
And fortunately, I had the experience set up so that I could do that, and I started to heal. And everything began to change at such a drastic rate that brought me into this path of self-reflection and self-awareness. And the way that I actually heal was by doing this thing that I'm about to share with you called awareness documentation, or hashtag ad talk, A-D talk. You're literally talking out and healing and self-reflecting as a, a process that it's like vlogging for healing, basically. And it is, it is a modern movement, building community. And I want to see this happen in that you basically make a vlog of yourself expressing what it is you're going through, an experience that we all can relate to, we all have. What is the one thing that we can all relate to here as human beings? Pain. It's so abundant, isn't it? It's such a joy. We all go through pain and struggles, and what actually makes us happy is feeling just a bit better by overcoming some sort of problem, by finding a way to solve a problem and create some resolution in our life so that we feel a bit better. You know, we're all just trying not to get hurt, right? And we're trying to go through life without getting hurt. And if we can avoid those struggles, great. But we have to overcome some challenges to make our life the most ideal as it can possibly be. Or they'll keep coming up and they'll come back even harder if you don't solve them. So we're trying to make our lives just a little bit better. And all of our decisions are motivated by just trying to feel a little bit better. Right? So that's all I did. And I literally took this camera right here that is filming me right now that I'm pointing into. And I took it even without a microphone. It's a GoPro camera, GoPro Hero 5. And I spoke into that thing and I'm looking at it and I'm talking into it and I'm saying, this is what progress means to me. I'm going to be a motivational speaker. And little did I know that me being a motivational speaker was me actually speaking to myself, not for anybody else. It was, I was speaking to motivate myself to do something with my life. And everything began to transform, man. I didn't think that I'd end up learning sales as the first way for me to basically learn how to have my own ideas formed for myself for a couple years. And then I'd end up starting my own business. Like, wow, that's incredible. Um, and then I didn't think I'd be homeless either, but, you know, the same people who put me through some forms of abuse uh, also ended up leaving me on the streets. Kind of makes sense, because I healed. They had no more need for me. I, if I'm not somebody that can be abused anymore, and I'm not weak, and I'm healed up, and they can't penetrate my boundaries, well, I'm okay being on the streets. So that's kind of what happened. And then I showed up in this new place here and I'm like, hey, um, I gotta heal my body because I got some health challenges and that hasn't been resolved. But what can help you with your health right now, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and even help you physically if you deal with the emotional root of whatever it is you're going through is awareness documentation. And you just speak on whatever progress it is that you're looking to achieve. And there's a really systematic way to do it that basically guarantees it will work toward your benefit. But the easiest way to figure out that whole system that I did for me is to just start with four basic points. Four basic points that you're going to speak on and you're going to speak through and you're going to speak from a place that isn't from your mind, so to speak, but it's from your heart. You're going to speak focusing your attention here and you're going to speak focusing on the past, bringing that to the present, and then moving it toward a future. So it's this timeline, this direct goal. And when you do this is, it tends to be when you're stressed out about something. So you get triggered, so to speak, and you speak about this problem. Here's the four points. The first one is problem. The second one is pain. The third one is hope. The fourth one is solution. Remember to speak from your heart. I just had this thing happen to me. The problem is somebody isn't treating me with the intention as if I can actually feel safe to engage with them. And there's some stranger across the world. And they're asking me questions about uh, that are very personal that I don't want to answer. 
there's this problem with that and it causes me pain because if I answer that, I'm actually going to be talking about other people in my life. And I don't like talking about other people in my life because if they come to find out that I talked about them and I said bad things about them, but it was my truth, it was my reality, it was my story, then it could come back at me and like, I don't want that. At the same time, I don't want to violate my integrity and and talk bad about people when I don't really, really feel bad about them. It just happened to be some things that caused me to no longer want to associate with them. So there's the problem. I just spoke on the pain. The hope is, well, you know, maybe if I can see what it is that they're doing here and make the bridge from pain to hope through gratitude, you know, I can be grateful for the experience that they're putting up boundaries and I'm putting up boundaries trying to connect with this stranger. And there's got to be a reason to be thankful for me trying to understand that but not quite being able to connect simply because I'm telling my truth and they're a little bit uncomfortable with that and they haven't quite responded yet. So maybe the hope is to move in a different direction where I can either leave them be or I can try again and try and understand what their intentions are because we don't understand each other's intentions and we both feel not safe. And we're both talking about very sensitive topics that are very personal on a much deeper level. And we want to move toward this place where we kind of feel at home. We feel like we're talking to family together. So maybe we got to get clear on what our intentions are. Maybe we got to make sure that we're not going to harm each other. So then what is the solution? problem, pain, hope, solution. So I was grateful for the pain, which allowed me to move into hope, which basically transitions that cycle of pain into a new direction, a positive one. And the solution is, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact this person. I'm actually going to text them and I'm going to say, you know, I guess we're just not getting or understanding each other's intentions. And, you know, um, maybe we need to make that more clear. That's the actual solution. It's more of a tangible, physical thing that you do or just a general direction for what it is that you need to do. Now, this is the awareness documentation. You speaking into a camera saying the problem, the pain, the hope, and the solution. The reason why it works is because you first identify the problem. You acknowledge it. That's half the battle. When you speak into the pain, you begin to bring up those emotions and actually feel what it is that you're going through. And this is called self-reflection. It's also called emotional literacy. You're, You're evaluating what it is that you're experiencing and you're learning how to analyze it and you're learning how to manage your emotions to understand the language that helps direct you in life. Because your emotions are basically your internal compass and they're helping you attune to the direction of where it is you need to go. So if you haven't been listening to them all this time, you basically silenced your heart. You've silenced your truth. And you're speaking from this place because you're trying to listen to your truth and get out of this anxiety-filled head with all the anticipation of the worst possible outcomes. You silence that by being curious. So hey, what is it that I'm going through? I'm speaking to myself. I'm not speaking to anybody else, but I'm speaking into a camera, speaking into myself as if I'm looking myself dead in the eyes. And by unpacking this pain, literally unpacking it, you bring it all to the surface and you're like, hey, this isn't so right here. Why don't I look at this a different way, in a hopeful way? How can I be thankful for this experience that is trying to redirect me toward a new solution? So... This gratitude is the real game changer in flipping that cycle that so many people live through. They, they, they feel like they're, they got so many problems and all they've got is pain and all they see is that. There is no other way to go. But what you got to do is just really pay attention to what that pain is trying to tell you and then see it differently. See it as something that is good. It's there to serve you, to redirect you. Pain is the real great redirection from the universe. It is trying to tell you something very important. So just listen and pay attention to what's actually happening. Acknowledge the patterns that your life is setting up for you and then change it toward a positive outcome. So you're grateful for the experience. You see the hope in that. 
Oh, oh, that is so meaningful. So how can I derive meaning from this and actually apply it to my life? I think internally I've got to change the way I feel about this experience. That's the solution. But because you've already altered your perception with the hope there, now you have to actually change the experience internally about how you feel about this situation. So for me in that example, oh, well, I either don't talk to her or I try again. And, and by trying again, if they don't talk to me, then that's it. That's fine. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to follow up with them and contact them multiple times. If they don't understand that our intentions need to be in alignment right here, we need to be on the same page together if we're going to continue this conversation and work out our differences and actually feel like we can connect with each other and move toward a more familial bond at home. You know, what, what does home mean to you? This is a good activity. Write down on a sheet of paper all the positive things and all the negative things that you can think up within a minute of what home means to you. And then read that back. Pause. Pause the video. Pause the video. Please, pause the video. Okay, now when you read that back, what are all these things under home? Are they all actually positive? Are they all positive things on this list that you're reading off? Because I can tell you what, if there's something negative there, then that's good because you're not trying to avoid your problems of what you may have experienced at home. A lot of things have to deal with childhood trauma and how that has grown to evolve in your life. Now, if there were no negative things, then you're trying to deny something, potentially. Your home isn't all beautiful and lovely, is it? But here's the thing. So if you got the positives and negatives, cool. If you don't have all that, you gotta figure it out, what home actually means to you. Cross out home and replace it with the word love on that sheet of paper. Now, wow, home is actually what you feel love is. Love is actually what you feel like home is. So what you grew up in that environment at such a young age is how now you begin to look for love in other people. So maybe you're trying to be understood. You know, oftentimes that's, that's how I search for love with somebody is, is understanding because nobody understood me. Nobody wanted to believe me. Nobody wanted to acknowledge my problems. So I was very mentally and emotionally isolated. I was mentally and emotionally homeless. And that's what my book is about. And um, basically, what I'm trying to bring to you is to, to be at home, at peace within oneself, to no longer be homeless, and to be free, emotionally free. So by doing this awareness documentation, you're basically going to speak into problem, pain, hope, solution, and then you're actually going to follow through with this process from a past, present, and then future, what you're actually going to do something about it, and you're going to play this video back to yourself. And you're going to watch yourself. You're going to watch your facial expressions. You're going to listen to your voice. I mean, body language, tonality in your voice and the words you actually say. You may even find that what words you're actually saying are lying to yourself and what you really feel inside. And by watching this video back, you're self-reflecting. You're like, wow, I can see deeper into to what it is that I was experiencing. And, and you might even begin to cry because the emotions that are there that have been buried within your life and you just so intuitively brought it up on the spot, how you really truly felt. Watching that back, it's like, man, I need to do something about this, you know? You're dedicated to progress and the process in that progress because you're documenting what, what it is you're actually going through. You're not creating something you're not. You're not being artificial. You're being really real here, right here with the camera, with yourself. You're talking directly into the camera and you're playing it back to learn who you actually are. And by doing that, that's helping you self-reflect. But once you've actually played it back, at the end, you create an actual summary of what it is that you need to do now after self-reflecting. So you're, you're gonna restate that. Problem, pain, hope, solution. Of all it is that you just went through, all the cycles of that problem, pain, hope, solution that you just mentioned, you're gonna restate that and you're gonna provide an actual tangible solution. Something that you actually need to physically do, an action step to help resolve that problem within your life. And once you begin to overcome these challenges within your life, you're gonna feel just a little bit better. And you're gonna be like, dang, I feel so good. Wow, just that small thing just completely changed my life. How can I do it again?
So by every awareness documentation that you actually do by making this video here, filming yourself, playing it back, and then writing down the cycle, the summary of what it is you experienced and what you need to actually do, you come back and do it again. Whether that's the next day, whenever you have some sort of stressful situation, whenever you feel like you need to bring up some sort of summary of what you experienced recently throughout the day, you self-reflect on that. You develop the emotional literacy, the emotional intelligence, you know, the mental health through all these cycles that you're processing, and you actually problem solve, learn critical thinking skills, and actually learn how to better understand people, especially yourself, develop self-awareness. The one thing I would want to give anybody, and you overcome your challenges and move forward and evolve as a better human being. And then by becoming a better example and human being yourself, you connect with the world in that way. And in that relevance, you are growing and helping shape the world by being and taking care of yourself, being the best version of yourself which helps the environment around you by sharing your joy, living your joy, and learning to share it by documenting instead of creating something you're not with this process in your progress. Awareness documentation. You're helping set an example for the world by being everything that you actually are. And you don't have to do this yet. But I aim for this process to be something that is shared online. People share their awareness documentations, creating a very vulnerable community, which I have. And if you want to join, you're more than welcome to. The information is in the description below. Uh, it's called Motivation to Speak into Emotional Intelligence. It's a Facebook group where these people share their experiences. They learn from them. They share with other people. People can get vulnerable. They can share all this pain that we're actually going through when we want connection instead of isolation through growing as human beings together, creating that community, that sense of community and bringing back inclusivity into the world. That's what we want, right? So make it fun. Make it valuable. Enjoy the experience. And actually start creating conversations around what it is you're going through. This is what I want. And then there's other aspects like interviewing each other and learning from each other and learning not just to value yourself but to value other human beings as well which helps you see them as a part of yourselves so that you can love yourself even more too and develop your character. And then there's parts where you're just, oh my gosh, I'm learning so much about myself. I know my strengths, I know my weaknesses, I know my vulnerabilities, I know my gifts, I know my talents, I know everything I'm good at. And I keep learning. So I'm going to go do those things that I'm gifted at and I'm going to help share my gifts with the world and this is this is what i'm meant to be doing i feel so good to be living in my purpose awareness documentation can give you all of that and it gave me it so i want to share this process with you it's so simple problem pain hope solution speak into a camera play it back and learn everything you actually are don't forget to summarize it you beautiful soul now uh write down in the comment section what one unique thing are you thankful for today? Answer the question, please. If you watch this far, and <laughs> what is a beautiful soul? People of the world, can I get a family from all humans I meet? We're familiar, as though we're all familiar. <laughs> Mode evolution operation, uniting all nations. I love you, beautiful soul. Thank you for sharing this time and attention with me. You can never get it back. So pay attention to who you are sharing your time and attention with, my friend. And don't forget to take care of the world, okay? I love you. Hello, my name is Michael Earth Osada. Thank you for coming into my life. I'm an unshakable optimist who believes in the future connection of a multicultural experience and our ability to build it together. My why is to inspire people to be emotionally free so we can truly express ourselves, be understood, and live in harmony. My mission is to shatter the image of degradation and replace it with the mode for developing opportunity. I lead people in emotional freedom by helping them find self-awareness so they can experience a holy, complete life of bliss with 
in emotional intelligence 30 steps to live a purpose driven life is a pyramid beginning from the outside Your first step is inside Inside is your awareness to find You must get to the top of the climb If you want the answers to your mind